here if it gets bedtime. As long as the bed's clean and there's a bathroom to take a bath in, you know, or a shower, that's fine. So I have, uh, I, I will get out and I, I do things. How does your husband feel that you, you get all this attention from being like a, a sex symbol, I guess? He thinks that's funny. He always, <laughs> he always thought I was sexy, but he loves me so much that he thinks I'm sexy even when I look the worst. I mean, he th I mean, to him, I'm pretty, just like he is to me. When you love somebody, you come to just love them all. But he, he I'm lucky that he's, he's one guy that likes me without makeup, and he also loves it when I do makeup. So uh, he doesn't seem bothered. I think that we have a very secure feeling. He's very independent. He likes to do his own thing. I like to do mine. I don't tell him what to do. He don't tell me what to do. And then what we do together, we really enjoy. So I'm very fortunate there because we are real good friends. I do know other people that have more possessive husbands and, and wives that are more possessive, but uh, I'm not, we're not really that jealous. We've been together for 20 years now. And uh, so we've come to know each other pretty good. We met the very day I moved to Nashville. And I knew when I saw him, he was the one that I would marry and the one I would stay married to. And we go as people, you go, you know, through all kinds of things. I see people that turn my head. I'm sure he does too. I left two boyfriends back in the Smoky Mountains. Uh, and at I just time? wanted. Huh? You had two at one time? Well, I had two that I was dating pretty serious. Oh. One that was more serious than the other. And, uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I just, I had already told them that I was leaving. I had a dream and I was, I had a career and I was moving to Nashville. And, and as soon as I graduated from high school, that I was going and I did. I graduated on a, uh, Friday night, I left on a Saturday morning for Nashville. So I had no plans to get hooked up with no men, no boys, until I saw, well, I wanted to date, but I mean, I didn't want to fall in love and I didn't want to marry. I just wanted to work on my music, work on my career, get to Nashville and really hit the streets and take my songs around. I was at the laundromat. Uh, the very first day I got to Nashville with some dirty clothes I'd brought from home in such a hurry. I met him at the laundromat, and it's been wishy-washy ever since. <laughs> <laughs> now that you've become famous, do you often feel scared that you might lose your fame? No, I'm afraid I'll lose my money. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. Um, I don't really think about it like that because I feel very secure with me because I have so many things that I can do, like to write songs. I've been very fortunate in the fact that I can write, I can produce, I can arrange, and I'm going to write books. I come up and I have a lot of business things that I'm involved in. I come up with a lot of you know business ideas. In fact, there is a, uh, a place that I'm starting in East Tennessee uh, called Dollywood, USA. It's a town, it's like a mountain Disneyland. You started 9 to 5 with Jane Fonda. She's an activist with a lot of causes. How do you relate to that? Back in my part of the country, when she uh, was being so political and this and that, I mean, like where I grew up, they wanted to string her up and they thought it was terrible, and I didn't agree with a lot of it either. But the thing is, she still stood up for something she believed in, and uh, I think you have to do what you believe in, whether it's right or wrong, if it's right for you. And if, you, if you're going to feel wrong because you don't do it, then, you know, who's to say what's right and wrong? Well, in 9 to 5, you were like discriminated against sexually does that ever been a problem for you like in oh, real life or anything i don't pay attention to that stuff i never i've never been discriminated against uh i like to think that i've uh, well, I mean, if I have, I've usually brought it on myself by flirting or something. You know, it's like, do you do a lot of flirting? I do a lot of flirting. flirting. <laughs> but I always did. I don't do it to just for the act of flirting. I just love people. I like to, you know, the, the communication. I like to smile. I like to be happy. I like to kid. I like to, and people call it flirting. In fact, Jane Fonda always is saying what a flirt I am. But I think she's a flirt too, but they don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen her flirting. Uh, I'm joking, Jane. Anyway, <laughs> but um, how do you feel about making movies? Do you like it? Not really. I like the end results, but it's a very uh, boring thing. It's a very boring process because all of my life I've been like a gypsy. I've, I like to sing my songs. I like to travel around. I love to travel on the bus. I loved, uh, you know, to see the world. And the movies kind of made me have to. Um, you know, have a set-down job, almost like a nine-to-five, you're part of the expression, <laughs> which I think is great, and everybody I know, you know, uh, or not everybody I know, but so many people, you know, love to be stationed. And I, I find the movies very hard in that respect. Also, I find it boring to do the same thing over and over. I like to do things spontaneous and then go on to something Just else. I, it. It's like, nye, 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 nye. well, I gotta do it, nye, nye, and you gotta do it the same way, you gotta look the same way. But I work very hard in another one. I, th I noticed that when I also got, there was some resentment toward me, uh, just walking out of the music business into show business because of a lot of the people that had spent their life studying and thinking, well, why do these people just walk in or do this and do, do that? It. But I mean, I wasn't asking for it. The public was asking it of me. What is your inspiration? Uh, 
everything, just life, just the fact that I feel like God gave me a gift, uh, and I feel I would be, it would be a, a sin for me not to use it. Of course, a lot of people think of God in a different way, and however you see whatever that thing is inside you that says do this, do that, or that makes you feel good about yourself, or, or whatever, I just feel like that that was my, um, that I was born for a reason. I don't know exactly what it is, but I feel we're all born for a reason with a purpose and I think that we have to run out and find out what that is so I keep working I'm inspired by the fact that I might be a little closer to solving that mystery of who I am and what I am what I'm here for and what I'm supposed to accomplish I want to know what that is so I guess I'll spend my life trying to accomplish everything I possibly could so if there is a judgment day someday God can say well you're done okay kid I want to the first thing I'm going to ask him is why did you let me run around looking like this whatever made you let me think I could do that so that's sort of, you know, like... To be, to be honest and open with you, I, I, I don't really like country music. Um, well, to be honest uh, and open with you, I really don't care. No, I was just, no, I was just curious I'm what, what people who really like it see it. I mean, obviously, I like country music, so... I mean, because I think maybe the reason I don't like it is maybe I don't understand it. Well, I can understand why you don't like it. I don't like a lot of it myself, and I grew up in country music, but I think country music is a music that you have to listen to, and most kids your age don't have the time to really listen to just the sad story when you'd rather, you know, listen to something you like that you can boogie to at the same time. So there's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with not liking country music. I love it. I think it's, it's, I don't like the corn poem country music. Although I've done a lot of it myself. Well, real corny. The twang, twang, twang. Uh. <laughs> you know, the, uh, but I, uh, and I can appreciate the fact that, you know, that you don't like a lot of it. But there is a lot about it that you, you would appreciate if you really got into it. It's the kind of thing you kind of have to get into, so. Well, we learn a lot about sex in school. How did you learn about it when you were growing up? In the barn. I was. <laughs> I grew up in the country, remember? I think you can learn about sex anywhere you are. And I mean, sex to me is not a dirty subject. I know a lot of people, mothers, will probably be going, oh, God, Daddy, get him out of the house. Don't let him see this. But I think, uh, I mean, as far as just really, I probably should stop now, right? Yeah, but no, I mean, I mean, it's everybody's curious. Everybody that says they're not curious, every kid or every grown up, I don't care what prude is watching the show. They either are no good at sex, or they're so good that they're ashamed for anybody to know how bad they like it, or how much they like it. Did you like school when you were growing I up, or hated were you it. like me? I hated it. I hated every... I don't mean this. I mean, kids, stay in school. You don't need it. I know that's what I'm supposed to say, right? Right. But I was not happy in school. I did not do well in school. I had, I was capable of doing it. If I applied myself, then I could do it. But I had a dream that burned at me. I stared out the window. I could not wait till I got out of school, till I could go follow my dream. I didn't want to hear about the teacher's dream or somebody else's dream. Although I know now that it's very important that you do stay in school, at least what I learned that was good for me about it. Although I hated every day I was in it. I never failed a grade, but I don't know how I got by. A lot of it was my personality, I think, because I would try to snow the teachers and sometimes it worked. And, but um, I was smart enough to have some sensible reason. But also, too, I couldn't carry books home. There's so many little kids at the house, they'd tear the pages out of them, chew them up, and, you know, get pee on them or whatever. So I used that as a good excuse that I couldn't get my homework, you know, because uh, I can't say I was great in school. I made it through. But I think it's important that, that we do try. I think it's important that we stay in. I think it's important that you get your lessons, <laughs> but you get to school, okay? Uh, you've heard a lot um, that um, drugs, I guess, are so closely related with the, the entertainment industry. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you relate to that? Well, actually, there is a lot of drugs. There's a lot of drugs anywhere, or there are, whatever. I hate school. <laughs> anyway, I think it don't have to be in show business. I think that it's... The reason that you hear so much about the drugs that are in show business is because people just get away with anything. Plus, the artists, the stars, are always in the limelight. The press is always eager to say, well, this one's doing drugs, that one's doing drugs. A lot of people are not into drugs that people think they are. But I have done enough of everything myself to know that it's better being straight and being clean. You're going to mess up your life. You know, you can. And if there's no, somebody says, well, be smart with it. Be smart with drugs. How can you be smart with drugs? What's it like to make all that money? All what money? You mean I'm going to get paid for this? No, the way that you make, I mean, your no. movie, your, everything you do. Well, it's nice to feel like you are good enough at what you do to be able to make money. I don't go out thinking I'm going to do this to make money. I feel like that I must do my best, and if I do good enough, then I, the money will come. I just like...